Halleluja.
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bless you, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I bring you greetings, and I pray that uh, you are doing well uh, while we are trailblazing uh, during the midst of this week, and uh, also to show again at the end of this week, but just hope that you're doing well and have testimony uh, that the Lord is purging some things and getting some things out of you, and we just welcome you to be a day. Uh, Bible and pray uh, that last week's lesson was a blessing to you when floods come and they will come and uh, you won't uh, always in life be able to control circumstances you just got to have a strong foundation and make sure that foundation is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness on today uh, let us share our lesson on today and that is out of Jeremiah the 33rd chapter and I just want to read verse 9, but you can read 6 through 11. But I want to focus on verse 9 of Jeremiah uh, chapter 33. The scripture says, And then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to talk for a few moments from the thought, rebuilding the ruins, rebuilding the ruins. Um, uh, when Jeremiah opens uh, with this particular piece of literature um, in 33, uh, it, it didn't look like what it was. How many know many of our lives and the things that we have come through, we don't look like what we've been through. And that's a joyous and a, and an awesome thing for us to really appreciate, and that is that God can allow us to go through some tough seasons in our lives. There's a story about a man named Tony. He had left home with his family, and uh, from his family, about 19 years old, made up his mind he's going out, he's going to be successful. Well, probably a year removed of him leaving, uh, he got real bad on heroin. And, uh, 
I'm telling you, that heroin got in his system and made him do some crazy things. Uh, that habit really got him in the fast pace and fast lane of life. And uh, this guy, even with a heroin addiction, started a casino uh, in the little home that he had. They were shooting craps. They were betting on games. Uh, they were uh, playing cards. They were doing all kinds of things while this man was making this money and using it to snort and to take in heroin. And so his family found out about it, didn't want anything to do with him because like family do, they have an expectation of you that sometimes you can't live up to. And guess what? He made a mess out of his life. And all of a sudden, uh, while he was searching uh, for an answer because he was just sick and tired, like we all do get when we are down in the slums, we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so he was in search of something that could cure him from his heroin addiction and change his life. He tried AA, and I mean, unfortunately, it didn't work. He tried to go cold turkey. Unfortunately, it didn't work. And one night, coming down an alleyway, uh, he heard some singing in a little old storefront building. It was an apostolic church. And the rest is history. God came in his life. The presence of God filled him. And... He had to go back home and sleep in the very place that he was holding casino debt and gambling. And all of a sudden, under the convictions of the Lord, without any uh, uh, program, without anybody uh, needing to coach him, you know what he did? He turned his casino that was in his house to a home church. <laughs> brothers and sisters, what an amazing story. What it just simply means, brothers and sisters, is that there are some ruins and things that have happened in your life and things that many of us are ashamed of, some things that we have done. But we did it while we was on the intoxication of the world. But how many know the Lord has an intoxication and that is his Holy Spirit? And that's why the scripture says, and be not filled with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And that's what happened to this man named Tony. And what happened was he began to rebuild his life from the ruins that he had created. And I want to encourage somebody today that God wants to rebuild friendships and rebuild uh, family, a concept of family, rebuild in you things you lost, joy. I mean, you walked away from the church. Uh, you just had to have that, that, that commitment of that relationship. Kept you out a year. You lost your joy. You couldn't sing like you used to sing. All of a sudden, you found yourself in a place that was just discouraging, only to find yourself back in the very place that you run from. Now you're trying to get your voice back. God told me to tell you, rebuild. Rebuild in that place of your life that had ruins. And Jeremiah talks about this, and there are three things that I wish to share with you in our lesson on today. When God begins to rebuild you from the ruins that many of us created on our own, the first thing that God has to do is heal. I wish you could have saw Tony in the floor that night. I wish you could have saw him with God healing him in that floor on the altar. Listen, the healing virtue of God, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, what it does, healing stops the damage, the hemorrhaging, the brokenness. It, it, it's not that it's all the way gone. It's that God stops it, you see. First thing you do when you get a cut, it was the first thing to do. Stop the blood. Is the wound still there? Yeah, the wound is still there. Does Tony still know where the heroin needles are? He does. But what God does is he, he heals. When he heals us, he stops us from needing. He stops us from bleeding. You see that? He stops us from needing the things that we He stops us from bleeding out of the things that we need to live. Okay. And that's what God is doing in this silly season for you. He is rebuilding your ruins by, first of all, causing the things that have caused you to get off track to just stop. And I just pray for you, brothers and sisters, that you would just accept that God is just stopping some things in your life, bringing it to a halt, causing you to have to reset. Now, watch this. What people don't know is that the healing process begins when the, when the hurt stops. But that's not 
what create finishes out the healing process what what the second thing i want you to know is not only healing is that what is in the healing is restoration if you can stop that blood and patch it up uh, just a few months ago man i almost cut my finger off i had some real sharp scissors and i opened them scissors up don't scringe and i was trying to open up a box and guess what that that those sharp scissors cut across that thumb and pretty much cut half of my thumb piece off. But can I show you what it looked like today? The skin grew back. The bleeding stopped. And God, once he stopped it, then restoration began to happen. White blood cells began to work with red blood cells and keep blood and began to heal me through the blood. I wish I had talk about time talking about how God heals you from the blood. But what was ruined started to be restored. And all of a sudden, my thumb is back. I'm not missing a piece of my thumb. I don't have any mark on this thumb to ever show you that I ever was in it. Did you hear what I said? When God restores you, he will restore you back to the place as if you never got in it. And that's what happened in Tony's life. When he turned that casino into a church, I'm telling you, he started having praise and worship, started inviting his family, and healing began, and restoration of family and friends, and everything it seemed like he had destroyed in his ruins, God was bringing back alive. And Jeremiah is talking about this when he says this moment of faith. He says, then this city. See, everybody has a before, and then everybody has a then. And I speak to you, brothers and sisters. That eyes have not seen nor ears have heard what God's getting ready to do for you in the last part of your life. You hear me? That I know you've been through some things that have broken your heart. But can I give you the good news? The good news is let the healing begin. Let restoration take its place. And the last thing that I wish to share with you that Jeremiah is bragging about in his, in his declaration of faith is that God is going to start rebuilding. God is not only rebuilding, not talking about no building made by man's hands or made by brick or by wood. I'm talking about God is rebuilding some stuff back in you. When God stopped that bleeding, stopped those things that were hurting your life, how many know, brothers and sisters, God is obligated? The Bible says that we are workmen with him. We partner with God. God provides the tools. You provide the wood. God provides the nails. You provide the steady hand. When you work with God, God has a way of rebuilding some things in your life. And I pray that during this fast and this season of things that you are witnessing by fasting and spending time with God and the things of the Spirit, you can feel them building stuff back. I pray God build back the praise in you. I pray God build back your honor that you used to have for God. You didn't let nobody get in that space and time that you had with God, but he's rebuilding that stuff back with you. Oh, I praise your holy name, Lord. I give you praise. You are so amazing. You're touching somebody right now. That the healing process has begun. God has called restoration to happen. He's causing things to be rebuilt back in you. And if you're able to do that, then you will have the same rapport that Jeremiah had. Look what he says. Then this city will now bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor. It reminds me what David said, and I'm done. David declared in Psalm 30, verse 5, Though weeping may endure for a night, joy, it will come in the morning. Man, I love God because God can take a season of mourning and turn it into dancing. God to take a season of bitterness and turn it through a season of breakthrough. And I just, I just prophesy that over your life, brothers and sisters, that God is getting ready to restore you from your ruins. Don't be ashamed of what he brought you out of and what you made it out of. God's going to use that very thing to restore you and make you whole. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Spirit of the living God, we love you. We thank you for the word that we have received today. I pray that your people can receive healing from you in this season. I pray, Lord, that that healing, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, when I cut my thumb, it brought the blood began to rush to that area. And that's what I thank you. <laughs> I thank you for the blood that rushed to the area of my life that was ruined. I thank you that that blood uh, that you said there in verses 7 and 8, you declare cleanses us from our sins. Thank you. 
O oh God, for the joy that you are restoring in people's heart. Thank you. Thank you that somebody praise is going to the next level. And I thank you, Lord, that our honor of you and honor of people in our lives, that you are mending things together that were broken, that have broke uh, to, to a point where it seemed like it would never be restored. And Lord, we just say, Lord, thank you for your healing. Thank you for restoring hope. Oh, hallelujah. And we thank you for sparking new life in us when it seemed like we were dead. We thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your saving power. Thank you for restoring somebody who's in a season of ruin. And we give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. Stay strong on the fast.